So we are back in Barcelona, it's MWC 2025. I'm here with Danielle Rios, acting CEO of Totogi. Danielle, of course, you've got the lure of the great barista here with a fantastic coffee, but of course, we always want to find out what Totogi is up to as well. So what's going on for MWC 25? Well, thanks for coming back. I always have really amazing coffee and great baristas, but what Totogi is doing at MWC 25 is obviously this booth. We're in Hall 2, which is really, I think, the software hall. And so we're always in Hall 2. We love it here. The other place where you can find Totogi is upstairs right after the south entrance with our partner, AWS. They have a really great kiosk there. And so if you're over there, you're in Hall 2, come by and see us. And we're really showcasing two products, BSS Magic and Flan AI. So on Monday here, you spoke at the uh, Gen AI Summit. Uh, what can you tell us about your vision for the AI first telco? Yeah, well, you know, who would have thought that AI would be a big topic at MWC? So the Gen AI Summit, I think, had space for 200 people in the room. 2,000 people wow. showed up to try to get it. So high, high demand to find out how you build uh, an AI first telco. And so one of the biggest problems that telcos have is they're burdened by legacy tech debt, especially in the BSS space. You have tons of vendors trying to interoperate. It's one of, been one of the big problems that TM Forum is trying to solve. And so BSS Magic is really trying to tackle that problem. We are piggybacking on those open standards and we connect to any BSS system, third party, homegrown, whatever it might be. And so I think the big misconception about BSS Magic is that it is a transformation or a swap off into our product. That's not what it is. It really is an AI layer that provides a domain specific ontology, totally trained on telco. And so you just add in a prompt and it understands your business to model all your processes and products and away you go. And so we think that's gonna be the future of AI. It's not adding AI in silos to products. It's really adding them across your enterprise. Okay. You recently released some news about a plan AI deployment with a tier one operator that helped that operator to increase revenues. Can you give us some more details about that? And have you got any specific numbers associated with that deployment? Yeah, no, it was super great. I mean, one of the biggest problems we have in telco is uh, revenue, right? We're constantly looking for revenue, chasing network APIs or enterprise uh, ideas. But what this is, is straight into the main core business of a telco on top of the Totoki charger, adding AI in two ways, predictive AI with machine learning, but also generative AI. And so what we do is we create micro cohorts of subscribers that have similar characteristics and send out micro offers to them to uplift revenue. And we did. We got uh, inactive subscribers to re-engage. We got subscribers using data to use more. And in a prepaid uh, sort of setup, that's, that's actual revenue. And so within a couple of weeks, we were able to drive revenue up 10 percentage points with the cohorts that we were in. In a in, couple of weeks. In a couple of weeks. And the biggest problem, Ray, is that the humans want to double check the AI, right? And the AI is coming up with ideas that humans wouldn't think of. And so our biggest thing is like getting the humans out of it and like trusting the AI and letting it go. And yeah, so if you're looking for ways to get revenue, I think I embedded a money machine. So use it. Yeah. Now, your recent acquisition of CloudSense towards the end of 24, that created quite a stir in the telecom industry. Now, why was this particular configure price quote or CPQ solution so attractive? And how does it address some of the challenges that telcos are facing? Yeah, there was three, I think, three really big ideas about the CloudSense acquisition. So number one, it sits on top of Salesforce, so it makes it automatically cloud and SaaS. You know me, that's my thing. So check mark right there. Uh, number two, it's, it has deep telco roots and it's focused on the telco industry. And I think telco does have very specific needs around CPQ, right? You know, complicated products. You have to do some technical feasibility testing to make sure what you're selling to a big hospital or a big manufacturing plant in terms of, you know, some sort of bundle. Uh, the catalogs are really expensive. These quotes are big dollar value. They take weeks to put together sometimes, right? And so CPQ in telco is a thing and we're just going to focus on that. We're not going to go horizontal or try to chase another industry. We're just going to focus in, in telco. So that's number two. And number three, AI. I mean, it, this is a great place to add AI. And so we're really excited about not only adding it natively to the product, but also having it work with BSS Magic. And so right. it's going to be really, really great acquisition for us. 
So, Danielle, you're known in the industry for always having fun and not doing anything by halves. And so, as usual, you have a party here, MWC 25. Can you tell us what you've got planned this year? We're back. We're doing another party. It's Wednesday at 730. I think they are the best parties in Barcelona. Uh, people last year came up to me and said, this is like the old days of Telco, which I don't really, I didn't really know those days. I think you know those I days. I still have the hangover. <laughs> so it's, I think we have a Nobu chef making sh sushi. Um, we're going to have craft cocktails, wine. And so it's a really nice way to kind of cap off MWC. I think spots for 400. And so I hope to see you there. I'll, I'll, I'll make some coffee for you. Only 399 seats left. Though. I know. Okay. I, that's so great. Okay. It's always great talking to you. No, and you. Thanks very much, Danielle. Awesome. Thanks. Thank you.